Rolls-Royce, we believe in the positive, transforming potential of technology. Throughout our rich heritage, we've pursued more competitive power, developing ever cleaner, safer, groundbreaking technologies that shape the world we live in. We've created the world's most efficient large aero engine, powered nuclear submarines, and enabled land speed records. We've developed game-changing engineering solutions for supersonic jets, and even supported NASA missions on the edge of space. We disrupt, we challenge convention, we champion new solutions. We pioneer the power that matters. We're always looking forward to creating an environment where our people can be at their best, shape the future, and work on incredible projects that matter. We give them the freedom to grow, challenge, and be brilliant. We collaborate, innovate, and embrace different ways of thinking. We're pioneers. Together, we'll advance beyond tomorrow. Hello, my name's Laura Wood and I'm an electrical engineer at Rolls-Royce working on the Axel project where we're developing groundbreaking technology. And I'm Phil O'Dell, I'm a test pilot with Rolls-Royce and I'm looking forward to flying later this year Project Axel, our record-breaking attempt. We'll tell you more about that over the next 30 minutes. And we want to welcome you to this hangar here in Gloucestershire Airport to give you an overview of the pioneering project where we are champion electrification in aerospace and also um, working towards more sustainable flight. So this isn't the first time that Rolls-Royce has been involved in this. We've done this before back in history. If you look here, you've got the S6B, the Schneider Trophy aeroplane. The Schneider Trophy was a record attempt trying to create the fastest seaplane that was competed for by a number of countries around the world. And we, Great Britain, won it in 1927, 1929 and 1931, which allowed us to keep the Schneider Trophy. And you can go to the Science Museum and see it. It's an incredible trophy. But there were lots of parallels with what we are doing today. It was powered by the Rolls-Royce R engine, which became the Griffin, which powered the Spitfire alongside the Merlin engine. And we're taking that pioneering spirit that Phil was just talking about to um, today's challenge within aerospace to build an all-electric racing aircraft. And we're very proud to be doing that with our partners uh, Electroflight and also the Oxford-based motor manufacturing company Yasa. But it's not just about records and record-breaking aeroplanes. It's about technology like this. This is the Airbus City Airbus that's flown recently, powered by Rolls-Royce technology. Incredible project and we'll talk you through that story as well. And the City Airbus project is only the start. You can see on screen a futuristic concept of what travel might look like. And that's where it's over to you and what travel could look like in the future. How will we travel? How will we be powered? Um, how can we make it more sustainable? And that's a project within our team and Rolls-Royce that we're very excited to take on towards our path towards net carbon. Um, and we just are going to hear as well from our team um, on how we're um, overcoming those challenges. Aviation is around two, two and a half percent of carbon emissions. The, the pressure to go away from a fossil fuel source to another technology, largely electric, is overwhelming. I think the social connections and movement of goods and technology and people that we can do through flying is fantastic. And we have to find a way to decarbonise that, but without losing those social goods. The reason we're championing electrification in aerospace is we see it as part of our overall strategy. Develop the gas turbine, uh, champion elect electrification and also sustainable aviation fuels. We're going to need all three to go to zero carbon. The project that we're undertaking is all about making a plane go very, very fast. And, and as part of that, we're investing in new technology, in new technology that we hope is going to enable cleaner, uh, more sustainable aviation. But we also hope is really inspiring. So you've heard all the really good reasons why we're doing this, the sustainability, the race to zero. Really exciting time around us now and a really exciting future and a future for us and a future for you in electric aviation. Let's now talk a little bit about the Nemesis NXT, this aeroplane. Only 10 of them built, designed in America by a chap called John Sharp. There's no manufacturing line, there's no manufacturer. They're built individually by their owners. Why is it such an incredible aeroplane? Well, it was built to go fast. It was built to break records in its original internal combustion 
version. And it's done that. It holds records in its class already. We stripped all of that out and put all this brand new technology in. And Laura's now going to take you through that technology. So we're going to start at the battery. And the battery is the energy for the full system. And it's built up of 6,000 of these VT6 cells that you can see in my hand. And as you can imagine, 6,000 of these cells generates a lot of heat, which is a significant challenge for our engineers to overcome. And that battery is controlled by power electronics, which you can see um, stacked on the side here, the battery. And that's going to be controlled by Phil using the throttle in the cockpit. And that's what's going to be driving the three motors, which you can see in the power stack at the front of the aircraft here. And those are going to be running at over 500 horsepower, which will um, spin the propeller at up to 2,400 RPM, which is going to be driving the aircraft to beat 300 miles per hour plus um, world speed record. Wow. Thanks, Laura. So I get to do the easy bit, which is to come along at the end of all this incredible technology, sit in the cockpit and fly the aeroplane. I am acutely aware of all the work that's gone in from Laura and from lots of others here at Electrofly with Yasa Motors and with Rolls-Royce. It, it's remarkable what's gone into this project to date with more to come. But now let's have a look at what breaking the record means and what we have to do to break that record. So the, the current airspeed record is 210 miles an hour. We intend with our aircraft to go 300 plus miles an hour. If we can break the world record, Electric aviation is here to stay. I mean, this is history in the making. High power electric propulsion is going to bring such a lot to aerospace. This is about how do we start to champion electrification in aerospace? So how do we get to show people what is possible? When we go to undertake the speed record, there, there are some rules that are set about how you do that. And those rules require you to do a certain course for a certain amount of time. So planes have gone 300 miles an hour before, but this is the first time we're doing it in an electric plane, and that offers some real challenges. We're really proud to be rolling out the aircraft now as a clear demonstration of our commitment to cleaner, more sustainable aviation. It's stunning, and it's going to be wickedly fast. I'm a graduate engineer, um, where prior to joining Rolls-Royce, I studied electrical and electronic engineering, and that's given me the opportunity to join the Axel programme. And within the Axel programme, I've had lots of different um, opportunities and tasks that I've been involved with. Um, one of them being the design of the cockpit and how that's a serious challenge in that it's a completely new space and what's it look like for an electric aircraft. I've also been involved in many different testing elements, so such as our battery testing, our landing gear, and also involved with the Iron Bird rig testing, which you can see to the side of me here. Um, and this is um, a testing rig which has got the full system, so you'll probably recognise a lot of the hardware um, that you've seen on the screen um, previously, such as the motors, inverters, propeller as well, where we've actually taken this rig up to full speed. And that's just a bit of a flavour um, of some of the tasks that I've been involved with and the opportunities that an engineering degree um, has given me to truly be at the forefront of the electrification of aerospace. And I now want to pass over to some of the um, other young engineers and some of the opportunities and challenges that they've faced in their career. I'm Bethany Hall. I'm an electrical engineer at Rolls-Royce. My school took me to an IET lecture about the Bloodhound supersonic car. And I sat there and thought, this is so cool. I really want to be an engineer. And now it's 10 years later, I'm a qualified electrical engineer and I'm part of Team Axel, building the world's fastest all-electric aircraft. I'm Matthew Morris. I've always been interested in electrical engineering, and now I'm at the forefront of what electrical engineering is, especially within aerospace. It'll be great to inspire the next generation of engineers and pilots into this new technology. So my job title here at Rolls-Royce is the Director of Flight Operations. So I'm accountable for operating our aeroplanes that we use within Rolls-Royce. So that's a 747 flying test bed, it's a Spitfire, it's a number of other aeroplanes that we use. And I have to keep them safe in operation, and I have to keep the people that fly on those safe as well. My last job before joining Rolls-Royce 18, 19 years ago was as a, a pilot initially for the Royal Air Force, flying a lot of fast jet aircraft, and then finishing up as a test pilot. And it's that that allowed me to bridge into this role uh, 
initially as the chief test pilot for Rolls Royce, where I looked after our flight test and took our products into aeroplanes and ensured that they were fit for purpose. For my 18 years in the Air Force and, and getting a career generally in aviation, there's lots of routes. I started by flying light civilian aeroplanes and worked my way up from running the reception desk at a flying club into learning to fly, into adding various ratings and getting myself in a position where at the time I could join the Air Force because that's what I wanted to do. There's lots of other ways. The Navy employs pilots, the Army through the Army Air Corps in, employs a lot of pilots. Ooh number of opportunities. Civil aerospace is taking a little bit of a, of a hammering at the moment as we've seen but it will improve and a little bit more of that, that later as we sum up at the end. But the biggest bit of advice is to do your research, lots of, of articles, lots of help, lots of people in aviation that will help other people outside of aviation. It's a very family feeling. Um, but also never to give up, just to keep going, always. When you get knocked back, you get up and you go again. I always thought I would follow an academic path, but once I started talking to Rolls-Royce at a career fair, it all sounded like the perfect fit, a chance to create as well as to think. The graduate program isn't about just sitting behind a desk. It's very hands-on. In my three years here, I've had the opportunity to work across functions, sectors, and countries. And I've recently moved into my first management role, sales director for civil aerospace. It's amazing that as a graduate, I get to see how Rolls-Royce operates on a global scale. Good communication and leadership skills can be just as useful as a technical background. I started programming when I was doing my degree. I was quite happy to see that my first role involved coding and scripting. This was a proper job right from the start. My background is in pure and applied mathematics. I like to turn a concept into something real, something I can see. My proudest moment was developing a new customer strategy mapping system. It was so successful that it's now the standard process across a number of our defense accounts. I felt excited that even as a graduate, you would be part of a team capable of building an engine made of more than 10,000 components. Even going on short-term attachments, you're constantly learning, being inspired by the people around you. I'm really proud to be part of Rolls-Royce. People here don't think in a specific way. Everyone brings something different to the table. So I've been very lucky in the nearly 40 years that I've been in aviation. Aviation is many things. It's, it's about being part of a, of a warm, friendly family that, that recognises determination, character, that stickability, that constant effort, um, never giving up, and all of those good things that you'll hear about probably from school teachers and parents. But it's, it's, it's true, it's very true. It's a difficult time in aviation at the moment, and there's a lot of changes going on. And if you've wanted and, and, and are hoping for a career in, in aviation, and, and aviation is many things, and I'll break that down a little bit in a minute, it's probably quite a worrying time. There have been other worrying times in aviation, and, and the one thing that's for sure is it does bounce back, and there's always hope, and there's always reward for those that doggedly just keep going and, it, and it's so hard and it's so easy to hit, sit here after 40 years and and, and 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 say it's just about that determination but it but it really is before covid and the awful pandemic around us at the moment we were talking about this being the most incredible time the third age of aviation and how it would all change with the race to zero and sustainability and, and the incredible engineering that's going on around us at, at, at the moment. And you know what, that hasn't changed. It, it's different now and COVID in the last few months have changed it, but it is going to bounce back. And there's incredible hope and incredible in excitement. And out of awful situations like we've all been through to, to various degrees, there is always hope and there is often great innovation. So from where we were, before COVID, plus what COVID has generated, it, it's not the disastrous future and change and, and aviation will never grow back. I'm pretty convinced and very confident, and I think I'm supported by many others, that there is great, great 
hope and future. And a key point in some of the most fascinating elements of, of, of flying, the aviation industry, etc. And I think we've talked about that. Just standing here for me and hearing Laura talk about her journey and how that's contributed to electrification, etc., etc. There's so many brilliant stories like that. And although it's a worrying time, it's also a hopeful time. And out of this adversity comes an awful lot of hope. Keep, keep focused, absolutely and utterly never give up. And, and the future is incredible for aviation. project we wanted to inspire you, the next generation of scientists and engineers into aerospace and really show what a fantastic opportunity it is. And if you're interested in finding out more or looking for some learning materials please refer to our website rolls-royce.com forward slash them. So thank you for spending your time today and coming on this journey and, and for the opportunity for Laura and I to talk about our careers and how we've got into aviation and how much we've got out of it. It's been a great privilege and, and, and enjoyment for us. And also for the opportunity to tell you about Project Axel and that really exciting future for all of us in aviation. And lastly, we really hope that you'll come on the last part of the journey with us and follow us as we progress over the next few months to breaking that world electric speed record. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.